Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the enchanting operetta, The Great Waltz. Starring Gordon McRae and his guest, lovely Elaine Malvin. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another memorable musical success is brought to you by the American Railroad. The same railroads that bring you the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the multitude of other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. <laughs> Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, I am Johann Strauss the Younger, and Elaine Malvin is the lovely Racy, as we bring you The Great Waltz. Excuse me, would you tell Fräulein Trace, please, that Herr Strauss is here? Are you Herr Strauss? Oh, I just love your music. I'm afraid you're thinking of my father. You see, there are two of us, father and son. And... Do you compose, too? Well, sometimes a, a little. Shani? Oh, you're early. Racy. Racy, I've got news, great news. Herr Strauss has been telling us that he is a composer. A very good composer. It must be awfully difficult to find new melodies right out of your own head. Music doesn't come from the head, from the heart. It's always there, and waiting for something to let it out. A morning like this, for instance, or a look in a woman's eyes, and, well, a tune is born. The girls are fair, you are my songs, leading where music belongs. Dark as the night, fair as the morn. Whenever I see you, music is born. Bright eyes, laughing melody, and song. Tunes from the sea, beating in my heart. You plan you me everywhere play. I land you all in my world. Smile is like a song you sing to me. Life is music that you bring to me. So I've been engaged to conduct at the new Peterhof Gardens. Oh, how exciting! Tell me all about it. Well, I, I went to see Herr Steinbrook, and he said he never knew Johann Strauss had a son my age. And he asked me where I'd been hiding. Oh, Shani! Oh, Racy, do you know what this is going to buy us? A marriage license. <laughs> 
Oh, Shani, darling. Oh, I shall feel like going before the audience that first night and saying, please, everybody, like this music. It means so much to us that you like it. Maybe they'll understand when they hear the music how much of my love for you is in it. Anybody who's ever been in love will know. As my guide and the face I'll decide with you by my side. Though my goal may be far, I can reach it while I see the light of that star in the sky. It's difficult at first to find the things you sought for, things you give you. Happiness is just a kind that must be fought for, but you will find it in the end. The dreams I dreamed but dare not say, the dreams that seem so far away, at last have come a little near. At last, the skies are growing clearer. Forgive the past, your day will come at last. There's a Shani, promise me you won't tell your father about conducting. Why? I think he's the reason you've never been hired in Vienna. Gracie. Your father is jealous of your talent. The Waltz King doesn't like any pretenders to his throne. You're mistaken, Racy. I'm going to tell my father. Then I'm going to do something. There's a very influential person I'm going to see to help protect you from your father. <laughs> Wonderful music, Gracie. Do play some more. I knew you'd like it, Countess. Oh, it's a waltz that forces you to dance. Does this one have words? Yes, Countess. It's called Only One Hour. Listen.
the way you sing it, that you're in love with the composer. Oh, I am, Countess. Very much. Ah, then I shall attend to the father. You and I, we shall concoct a little scheme, Racy. Now, when does young Mr. Strauss give you your next music lesson? Tomorrow. Good. I shall be there. Play and sing some of this wonderful music. And uh, perhaps an extra pair of ears will be listening. <laughs> My dear Countess, where are we going? Uh, to a bakery shop, Herr Strauss, containing some very rare delicacies. A daughter who sings like a dream, and the daughter, Suter, who composes magnificent songs. Oh. Well, I'm always anxious to help young composers. No, oh, it's the more established composers that I am interested in, Herr Strauss, such as yourself. You have played every capital of Europe but mine. It has always been one of my ambitions to play at the court of your country, Countess. Well, I think I can arrange that with my ambassador. My countrymen will be enchanted by the music of the Waltz King. Curious how a title spoken in jest many years ago clings to one. It is very richly deserved. At any rate, I have never had to defend the title. Who's that thing? That, my dear Herr Strauss, is my surprise. He is a young man who may one day be your rival. Mm -hmm. You may yet have to fight for the title of Waltz King. This is very interesting. I should like very much to meet him. Right through this door, Herr Strauss. Johnny! Father, your ladyship. Herr Strauss. Hello, Rachel. What was that you were playing, Johnny? Why, I was just improvising, Father. Don't be so modest, Johnny. It's a new waltz composed by your son, Herr Strauss. It has a lovely quality, don't you think? You have a kind heart, Mother. But uh, let me see that music. Yeah. Just a jumble against every established rule and form. I thank you, Countess, for speaking in my behalf. But this is an old argument between my father and me. I maintain you must write the music you feel. But my father is a traditionalist who feels one must write according to all the established rules. But this beautiful melody... Madame, about a great many things I know nothing. About one thing I know a great deal. That thing is music. I was writing successful waltzes before this boy was born. <laughs> Nevertheless, my dear young man, I shall be there on your opening night to applaud you. What opening night? I haven't had a chance to tell you, Father, but Steinbrück has offered me a chance to conduct at the Peterhof Gardens. You're not sufficiently equipped to conduct. They tear you apart. I forbid you. Father, I am going to conduct. Are you going to force me to go to Steinbrück and tell him you're incompetent to conduct? Father. Herr Strauss, you wouldn't do that. If my opinion means so little to my son, then I must regard him as just another musician. And since he bears my name, I will not have him make a fool of himself on the platform. It is my duty to tell them what I believe. Listen. Listen to this music. Shani, play it. This is music that will live when every stuffy thing you've ever written is dead and forgotten, Herr Strauss. Listen. Listen to some great music by the great Johann Strauss. We'll return for the second act of The Great Wolf in just a moment. Listen. It's March 1st, 1839. And quit his job to set up the first express business. Wells Fargo and the famous Pony Express followed in his track. But even in their wildest dreams, neither William Harnden nor the riders of the Pony Express could have visualized the vast nationwide door-to-door -door service that we take for granted today when we call Railway Express. Over 15,000 offices strategically located in every corner of the country 
handle over 90 million shipments a year for business firms, for stores, and for the convenience of folks like yourself. And a bewildering variety of shipments they are, too. Everything from circus animals to precious jewelry. To perform this valuable and complex service, the railroad way, efficiently, dependably, and economically, the Railway Express Agency uses more than 180,000 miles of railway lines. In addition to this basic transportation, the agency also makes extensive use of all other modern transportation methods in order to assure you of the quickest, most convenient possible service. And in the future, as in the past 115 years, you can be sure the Railway Express Agency will continue to keep pace with your needs and to provide the nation with its most dependable, efficient express service. And now here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of The Great Waltz, starring Gordon MacRae as Johann Strauss the Younger and Elaine Malvin as Racy. Racy, I don't want to go in. It was terrible of your father to convince Steinbrook not to hire you. And why is he playing in your place? I don't want to go into the Peterhof Gardens tonight, Racy. But the Countess said she sent a surprise. Well, whatever it is, I shall have a little heart for it. Oh, come on, Ian. Watching everybody dance and sing will cheer us up. Good evening, Countess. Oh, Shani, the orchestra rehearsed your new waltz this afternoon. It sounded beautiful. Did it? It felt good when I was writing it, especially... But... What's the use? Nobody will ever hear it. No, don't be too sure. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, I have some very important um, work to do. Don't go away. Racy, if someday I should stand on a podium and conduct an orchestra which is playing my music... Every downbeat will say your name, and everybody listening will know that your name is written on every note. With all my heart, I long for you. I wake to make a song for you. Each word like a bird flying home to you alone. With all my heart, I call. I don't know, Racy. Has anybody seen Herr Strauss? Uh, uh, Countess. Yes, Herr Steinbrook. Herr Strauss was last seen entering your carriage. Oh, all I know is the ambassador from my country suddenly wished to extend an invitation to the waltz king. So I was good enough to lend him my carriage. Is it a very slow carriage, Countess? My coachman will take hours through the back streets of the city. And meanwhile, Vienna will get a chance to hear some wonderful new music. Countess. But, but what shall I do? Oh, they want Strauss, Herr Steinbrook. Give them Strauss. Oh? This young man is ready to conduct the walk. Oh, a brilliant idea, brilliant. Is it all right, Shani? Oh, yes, yes, Herr Steinbrook. <laughs> Thank you. Um, um, ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. The uh, waltz king has been unavoidably delayed. So we have asked his son, Johann Strauss the Younger, to conduct. I entrust him to your kindness. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I would, I would like to play a new waltz of my own. 
It is called the Blue Danube. <laughs> weeks ago. The sun eclipses the father. <laughs> Young upstart. The doctor said you must not talk, father. Oh, Shani, my heart has been so filled with the music of Vienna that there's been no room for affection. Leave room in your heart for more than music, for people, for racy, for for sons. I remember, Father. You're a good musician, in spite of me. The Blue Danube, a fine melody, should be an E-flat instead of D. More brilliant register. Father, relax. Please, lie back. One hundred and fifty-two waltzes, twenty-four galops, six cotillions, thirty-two quadrilles, thirteen pokers, eighteen marches. The sum total of my life. And, oh yes, a son. 
the route the Blue Danube. My son. <laughs> Father? It, it seems strange that you weep, Sean. He was hardly a father to you. You see, I'm not weeping only because my father is dead. Because Vienna has lost its greatest musician. Ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Elaine Melvin. Ladies and gentlemen, in our cast tonight were Eleanor Audley, who was the Countess, Herb Butterfield, who was Johann Strauss the Older, Isabel Jewell, and Lou Merrill. The Great Waltz with book and lyrics by Moss Hart and Desmond Carter, and music by Johann Strauss was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Here's an interesting fact. The railroads of America maintain about one billion cross ties in their tracks. Until a few years ago, wear and weathering made it necessary each year to replace 100 million of these ties. Today, as a result of many improvements, especially in chemical treatment, cross ties last three times as long, and the annual replacement has dropped to only 30 million ties. This is one, just one good example of how railroad research creates better things and better ways of doing things. All to the end that the railroads may go on constantly improving their safe, dependable, and low-cost transportation service for you. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and the Red Mill with my special guest, Miss Eileen Farrell, on behalf of the other members of the cast and of the American Railroads, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying good night, everybody. The Great Waltz was presented by special arrangement with Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can currently be seen starring in Three Sailors and a Girl in Technicolor. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Oh!